Um, well, my name is uh, Daniel Sarasa. I uh, work for the uh, in Spain, and I'm also chair of EuroCities uh, Data Working Group. Uh, now, EuroCities is one of the biggest, biggest network of cities throughout Europe, mainly uh, medium <coughs> cities like, like Zaragoza. So let me first um, um, tell you a little bit about my city. Zaragoza is uh, the fifth, fourth largest city in Spain. It's a typical, uh, typical they say that whoever wins the election in Zaragoza wins the election in Spain. We are a test bed where uh, most of telecom companies uh, do their trials for the new project. So it's a very, it's a very typical, typical city, uh, provincial, open into the world uh, in the last years. Um, and uh, and uh, we are actively participating in, in Eurocities uh, Knowledge Society Forum. And uh, we've been uh, we've been asked by uh, by Eurocities to lead this uh, this work on uh, on on how data could be used uh, to foster better better cities, better solutions around also around the smart city debate. Okay, we're talking. Let's let's talk first uh, about data. Uh, what I'm going to show here has two has two sides. Uh, the first part of the presentation is a general reflection on uh, where we're at in, in the data and APIs and, and open government thing. And the second, uh, the second is, uh, is, uh, is going to, to explain you a little bit what we're doing in, in Zaragoza. I'm going to show you in the first part uh, many li limitations of, of current uh, data and API policies. And that doesn't mean that what we're doing in Zaragoza is, is better than the, than, the, than the state of the art. Uh, I want to be frank, uh, we're not doing, uh, we're average, so we're doing good things and, and not so good things. Uh, but this is one of the first limitations that we have, okay? We have, uh, as I said in my, in my question to a previous speaker, we've done a lot of work uh, on, in, in opening data, especially from the public, from the public sector. But we must recognize that, uh, that this, uh, this uh, our economy, this, this universe, uh, cannot only be understood looking at open data. So there is a, most of the data is, is this big data that is hidden uh, beneath the surface, uh, and is, is dark data. So uh, and, and dark data is the data that is powered in our economies. It's data that is managed by by utilities, by uh, transport companies, by new uh, mobility as a service providers, by banks, etc. And this. The, the power of this data, the knowledge of this data is hidden. It's not, it's not hidden. Um, so one of the things that we can do to overcome this limitation is to advocate also for, uh, for transparency on all fronts, public uh, private partnerships, also on data, uh, so that also private companies can, uh, can find uh, good arguments to, to start opening their um, so, when we started uh, to work on open data, we were very aware that uh, open da data could foster the economy of our cities. Uh, after setting up four startup incubators in, in the city, uh, we haven't found uh, actual companies relying on the data that we're open. And that is not a, a, a critic on open data. Data must be open. Uh, because of transparency, because it improves our, organi our organization, it opens a window to the world, it improves our processes, uh, etc. But uh, somehow we're not getting, uh, we're not fulfilling the promise of open data to create economic development. That's that's something that we have thought about, and, um, and we found some some uh, some studies from from the European uh, Commission, from McKinsey of how uh, could we foster uh, the world economy if we work on uh, opening private data. The reflection here is that, okay, um, if most people are living in cities and all the big data that we've seen held by Google, by Amazon, by so and so, is uh, private data, is, is personal data, it must be from people that live in cities. So jumping into conclusions, it says that cities are living, are sitting on a gold mine. And we wonder if we are getting as, as, as cities enough benefits from, from sitting over this gold mine in terms of new public, new services, new taxes, new revenues, etc. The answer is that probably no. So we need maybe to have a different conversation 
with uh, with the big uh, urban players. And that is uh, why we are uh, um, pushing, we've been pushing for the last year for this declaration <coughs> in Euro cities as part of this uh, chairmanship that we that we uh, hold. Uh, these are the ten uh, principles of citizen data that Euro cities just presented in the Smart City Expo in Barcelona, one of the most densely uh, populated places in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we're going to go one by one, um, um, explaining a little bit what what this is about. But this is part of this general reflection that cities, if we are living in an urban society, uh, and, and probably within 100 years, the UN says that 99% of people are going to live in cities, and that's a, that's a fact, that's something that is going to happen, whether we like it or not. Uh, we should be uh, considering cities as an actor in all this, in all this discussion. Um, well, one of the first things that we need to uh, we need to we need to think about is that we don't want data for the sake of data. Opening data for for cities is a very costly thing. Uh, it takes a lot of resources, discussions, uh, uh, and uh, and we need we should be uh, opening data because we want to tackle a problem want to fix something in the city. And this is this should be at the center, at the real center of our of our uh, of our thing. Okay? This is an example of something we're doing in, in Taramota. So we have a problem in this case uh, the uh, the bike public bike system wasn't uh, enough connected with the with the rail and with the bus <coughs> transport. So uh, we used open data to do workshops with the uh, innovation community in Tarakota. This is one of the top advisors uh, of the city that issued uh, the problem. <coughs> we made a, a, a contest of ideas and we came up with a solution which is this uh, a special type of, of, of cages to park bikes that you can find in Central Europe, but it, was not, it wasn't a thing that you could find in, 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 in Spain, powered by solar, a solar roof and compatible with with our, uh, with our uh, Zaragoza city same car, which is, which is the city, which is this car that you can use for virtually any public service in the city. Okay, so this is this is what we want data for to fix to fix problems. Now, data belongs to uh, data belongs to citizens, and we are we are the ones as city halls that are responsible to keep the, the citizen rights. I mean, we are the the first. Uh, the first place of, of, of contact when somebody buys a Ryanair ticket or uh, or buys an Amazon Prime uh, product, uh, what happens with their data? Uh, which is the window they are going to talk to uh, if they have a, a problem with the data? Where we are the closest window uh, for citizens. Uh, if uh, we could we could ha we could be given a more prominent role as cities, uh, so people, so citizens could exert their rights on, on data. It's easier, and the European Commission and the countries, uh, I think that they should uh, lean on cities to uh, to be the primary interfaces with citizens because they are the closest administration uh, to citizens, and citizens are used to go to cities for their water uh, supply, for their uh, taxis, for their I mean, and we have um, a, a physical interaction with citizens. Okay. Now, uh, what happens with anonymity, uh, anonymity and privacy in this world, uh, where uh, you know, where uh, computation uh, doubles every every uh, every two years, according to Moore's law, uh, where real anonymity uh, doesn't exist, anymore. even if all the data sets that we have are anonymous, when we do data sharing, when we correlate things, those are not anonymous anymore. And uh, on top of that. Uh, if you are, if your data is in a database, no matter how secure, how security measures you put there, there is always a, a risk that your data can be compromised. And, and we have to deal with that. And probably we will deal with that in a different way uh, if we are at one side of the Atlantic or if we are at the other side of the Atlantic, because we have different perceptions about privacy and about anonymity. Okay. Now, um, something that comes to help, and we've heard that in, in some presentation in the Open European Data Portal uh, before, is open source. Uh, open source uh, gives us, uh, the open source concept gives us a lot of, a, a lot of uh, um, tools uh, to, to, to fight this, this, uh, this battle. 
because um, because open source is about is about sharing. We're we're here about uh, talking about data sharing. It's about being being transparent. It's about uh, reprogramming your code. And we've heard a lot here about APIs. What does an API mean? Application programming interface. I'm here on Linux. You can, if you have the enough skills, you can reprogram your computer, your operative system. Um, what is the ultimate goal of citizen participation? Is that citizens can reprogram the city. Okay. So, uh, so basically, uh, we should be looking uh, for ways to make our cities open source. If we want to keep this uh, pace of innovation. This is what the smart city looks like today. Okay. City halls here. And there's a bunch of highly innovative companies uh, growing uh, at skyrocketing uh, paces that are defining our city. They're defining how we buy. They're defining how we uh, consume. They're defining how we how we move. And and, and we're lagging behind. You know, uh, we as public servants and our public servants, we're lagging behind them, trying to regulate, trying to understand them, try to to have a, this this conversation okay so we want to we want to share we want to share data do we want to share data with them is it possible to share data uh, what's happening here what's happening in Zaragoza for example is that we're releasing open data about traffic road incidents etc et et so the guys from Uber uh, they can they can drive better uh, than anyone else because they use this 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 data what do we get in, in return I mean they have they have a nice interface. They have Kepler for uh, for uh, GIS, but I think that we, they have a lot of knowledge about how the city works. And maybe we could have a different conversation with them, uh, not on data sharing, but maybe on knowledge sharing. One example: when the when the crisis hit uh, Spain in 2009-2010, the utilities knew that people were unplugging their appliances from the network. They saw the peaks and, and valleys of their electricity network. Well, two years after, these, these families uh, stopped uh, giving breakfast to their children. And they, they, they only had one lunch in, in, in city hall, in, in, in city school, okay? If we had known that in advance, maybe we could have, uh, we did, didn't uh, need to, to have the exact, the precise data about their network. But they could have shared that knowledge with our social services, so we could, we could have uh, had preventive measures for that, okay? So, um, of course, one, uh, one of the other principles is, uh, is about quality and interoperability, and this is very important, and this is what is going to drive, I think, the economy, the data economy. I mean, uh, it's very important, all these, these, these portals that try to federate open data and, and APIs, like the Dutch, like the French, this is really important, because uh, here is one challenge that the people from Eindhoven launched uh, two months ago in the, in, in the Eurocities lab. They say, okay, uh, this mobility as a service movement is really good. We have e-scooters, we have e-bikes, we have e but what happens with disabled people? Uh, they're letting completely out of the, of the picture, okay? Uh, and you know how many disabled people are in, in Zaragoza from 700,000 people? Uh, seven, 70,000, uh, 10 percent of the population have mobility problems uh, and their families. So that's a huge market. <coughs> it's a huge market for a company that, uh, that wants to create a scooter which is, uh, which is which you can use if you have just one leg, for example. Okay? And if you could replicate this solution from Eindhoven to Zaragoza by looking at the, ex the same data sets, interoperable data sets, you can, as a company, say, okay, my market is this big. Okay, and I can go to, to Eindhoven, but I can go to Zaragoza, I can go to, uh, to Manchester, and, and this is how we can escalate a smart city, smart city project. Because one of the main concerns of the European Commission with smart cities is that smart city pilots don't escape. You have H2020, you have a pilot from Santander, fantastic IoT, the pilot from uh, Bristol, fantastic, but they don't replicate, okay, in, in one another. And the business is not going to grow. Okay, uh, we want data to fix problems, and depending on which city you live, you will have one type of problem or, or, or another. And also, uh, we need uh, 
we need uh, city halls to make sure that data is used in an ethical and socially responsible way. Of course, there is also the uh, democratic uh, side of things, and this is this is uh, related to, uh, to to our sovereignty as a continent and as a, as, as a culture. Uh, if data uh, is not uh, properly used, then we can uh, see how uh, elections can be shifted and can be influenced by uh, no matter who that says something that goes by. Okay, this is fifth season of Homeland. It's absolutely uh, a must uh, for you to see. <laughs> to watch it, it's incredible. So, um, <coughs> what can we do as cities uh, uh, with our modest resources in the big data? Uh, we can put artists in the equation. We've heard about the triple headaches of innovation, quadruple headaches of innovation when we put citizens on the equation. What about the quintuple headaches of innovation when you put artists? Why do we want artists? For two reasons, because they think differently, okay? And if engineers, make cities, uh, cities will end up by being like machines, and cities are not like machines, okay? Uh, and <coughs> artists think completely, completely different. But, um, but we also need artists, because if we want to, to put citizens into the equation, and if we want to really connect the knowledge of data with citizen participation, and everywhere we have uh, participatory budgeting, consultations, etc., uh, artists can, can in just one trade, uh, make comprehensible what these complicated charts of data are telling us, which are almost impossible to digest in, in many times because are done by engineers. Okay, but artists like in, in like in, when they paint you in in, in Montmartre, they paint your face and say, okay, with two trades, this is what data is telling us about this problem. We have new displays. This is Utopia Center in Zaragoza, Utopia Center for Arts and Technology. We use that digital facade to to put uh, artistic creations about the thoughts of the city yeah, yeah, yeah. data yeah. so people can see it and, and yeah, yeah. Okay, This is Shanghai and this is uh, another exhibition that we have in Canada. Because, um, you know, when, when, when we wanted first uh, to explore the universe, uh, this guy Hubble said, uh, we're not going to understand the universe until we launch a telescope to the universe, okay? Well, if we want to understand cities, and there's many reasons why we want to understand cities and to improve them, because it's our future, then we want to start building <coughs> these telescopes in cities. In cities, and this is better. Now, the human, the human dimension. Uh, APIs is, is uh, well, the basic concept is that a machine connects to the API and retrieves data, and, and maybe uh, provides data, but uh, if, we, if we want to ensure that citizen participation comes into place, then we want humans. Oh, okay. Okay. And we want to design services with the, uh, with the, uh, I mean, with the aid of, of humans. And that's what we've created this open urban lab, uh, very linked to our, to our API, which is people, uh, understanding data, explaining data, and doing this mediation between the technical world and the, and the citizen participation. Now, these are some practical examples. Uh, some, of, some of them have, have been uh, mentioned here. But I want to mention you, the UIA. I am a UIA evaluator also. And I've seen that in Code 4, there are going to be a lot of real data sharing platforms. So we're going to, uh, to extract many lessons about now, we, we built a, a, an experimental prototype in the city. We have several APIs, the operational API, the open data API, and we have this experimental experimental thing that uh, we've published in this uh, book from the University of Florida. It's called the Periscope. It's a very experimental thing. It's informal, but it lets us play and, and learn, okay? Uh, so as opposed to the classical processes in big data, uh, in, in urban big data, we have we have uh, different different processes. But most important is questioning. We have to learn as an organization. We have to deal with governance, etc. And I, I wouldn't define big data for the four Bs, but the Bs. Okay? It sets somehow it sets us uh, our comfort zone. This is uh, what we talked about. Uh, we we need to deal with this fact that correlation of data kills anonymity. 
on uh, what we'll, we'll be able to do with quantum computing, for example, in the near future. It's unbelievable. Um, privacy breaches will happen, but there are some people, there are some examples that are willing to give their consent for the private data to be on, on public databases. This is, a, this is a health institution where they, they deal with uh, medical images. If you're able to donate your kidney, why won't you be able to donate your, your, your medical records, right? Uh, but people need to be aware that, uh, that their data is going to be used for the public good. And that is what we do in the first school. We guarantee that uh, personal data, because we work with personal data, <coughs> is uh, solely used for, uh, for, the common, for the common good. Uh, it is, we implement a, 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 an interesting uh, technique uh, by, by this uh, researcher from Microsoft, by the way, uh, which is differential privacy. That is, says our periscope uh, has noise in the records. So you cannot retrieve an individual record. Uh, and if you retrieve it, you don't know whether it's true or it's false. But as a whole, uh, what the periscope tells is, is true. Okay? Uh, this is about governance. We need to have the exact equilibrium between between regulation and, uh, and, and incentives. So all the players, <coughs> utility, banks, uh, transport companies, uh, scientific researchers, etc., they have the right, the right incentives uh, to cooperate, okay? This is, this is basically what these, uh, these data sharing agreements are all about. You're able to set the strategies of all player, players uh, to, to, to a cooperation, to a cooperation Okay. What we do is uh, we've been able to do this because we start by uh, opening this data, the data of the citizen card, and by this we uh, these, these companies believe that we are that we're serious, and little by little they uh, open their, their their data. So in this uh, this year we've uh, we've put uh, data from uh, from the main regional sleeping bags. In the in the periscope, and uh, we are running uh, we are running a contest uh, to see what happens. Okay, we also we also have crowdfunding to fund the prototypes that we are that we are extracting that we are designing uh, with this with this knowledge, and um, and also we are trying to trying to uh, connect this with the bigger program, which is the program which is 100 years from Calabota, whose purpose is to build. 100 years from people from Ottawa in real projects in this. And this is my final uh, slide. Uh, data is Watch Out for Data is the contest that, the contest that is active now uh, with all this data that we saw from private and public companies so we can connect collective intelligence uh, to, to this, uh, this periscope and come up with, with interesting visualizations of 